Before we dive in, subscribe to In the Beginning so you never miss the forgotten techniques that built civilizations long before modern tools existed. Because today's topic pulls us straight into Viking engineering, the kind of wisdom that doesn't shout for attention, but quietly solves a problem so well that it survived a thousand years. For the next minute, consider how crucial a watertight roof was to a people living in a region defined by rain, snow, salt wind, and endless freeze-thaw cycles. A leaking roof wasn't inconvenience, it was disaster. Wet bedding, rotting beams, mould deep in the rafters. Those were threats to health and survival. The Vikings didn't tolerate that vulnerability, and they developed a sealing method so effective that when archaeologists excavate Old Norse farmsteads, the imprint of this technique still appears in the sediment layers. It's silent, simple, and almost invisible, unless you know what you're looking for. The Viking roof seal method starts with understanding how they built their roofs in the first place. Norse roofs were far heavier than the modern romanticized images of neat wooden shingles. In reality, many longhouses used living sod, turf rolls, or layered birch bark paired with timber planks. The bark acted as the main waterproofing layer, but bark alone can crack, curl, and shift under weather stress. This is where the silent trick comes in. Vikings filled the gaps, seams, and tension points with compressed, hydrated plant fibers, most commonly sphagnum moss. Not loose moss casually stuffed into cracks, but moss intentionally soaked, squeezed, and packed until it formed a thick felt-like seal that expanded as the roof absorbed moisture. Modern builders call it wick sealing, but the Vikings mastered it centuries before the term existed. The strength of moss sealing lies in how the material reacts to water. Instead of failing when wet, it becomes stronger. Sphagnum moss can absorb many times its weight in water, swelling to fill voids and tightening its own structure. This meant that the wetter the storm, the more the Viking seal locked into place. Moss also contains natural acids that inhibit bacterial growth and rot. This made it the perfect companion material to birch bark, which itself is loaded with oils and resins that resist moisture. Together they formed a self-renewing waterproof system. When storms hit, bark flexed under pressure and the moss expanded to meet it, continually closing the micro-gaps created by wind and movement. Over time, as moss dried out after storms, it shrank but retained the memory of its compressed shape, making it even more effective with each cycle. One of the most interesting features of this method is, well, how it scaled across all forms of Viking architecture. Small farmhouses, large halls, storehouses, and even temporary shelters all use versions of the same sealing principle. And believe it or not, even boats benefited from it. Shipbuilders used moss soaked in tar or resin to pack seams between planks, creating a flexible seal that moved with the hull without cracking. The material was so abundant, renewable, and light that honestly there was no reason not to use it wherever water posed a threat. Farmers gathering moss for roof repair became a seasonal ritual in many communities. The trick was so quiet, so ordinary, that it didn't earn heroic sagas or carved rune stones. 
yet it was one of the technologies that safeguarded Viking homes for generations. For survivalists, homesteaders, and anyone exploring traditional building methods today, the Viking roof seal technique has very real modern applications. Moss sealing works on small structures such as outdoor sheds, root cellars, smokehouses, and temporary shelters. The steps are straightforward. Begin by collecting sphagnum moss, preferably from bog environments where it grows thick and resilient. Hydrate it until fully saturated. Then squeeze out excess water until it has a pliable, dense feel. Then pack it into the seams between boards, under overlapping bark layers or along the edges where materials meet. As the structure faces its first rain, the moss expands, forming an adaptive gasket. For anyone building a primitive cabin, or experimenting with natural roofing, this method outperforms many modern synthetic fillers simply because it moves with the structure instead of resisting it. Anyone who has repaired a shed roof knows how often expansion, shrinkage and vibration force cracks into even the most carefully applied sealant. Traditional materials solve that by embracing the movement, not fighting it. Another lesson from the Viking method is, well, the importance of layering. The moss was rarely used alone, you see. It worked best sandwiched between bark layers or beneath turf. The turf layer added insulation and weight, pressing the moss into the bark. The bark provided the waterproof membrane, and the moss, it worked as the dynamic seal between them. When adapting this today, you can pair moss with natural bark wooden shakes or even metal roofing. Some modern off-gridders use a layer of moss under corrugated metal sheets to absorb condensation and, you know, prevent drips inside their structures. Others pack moss between logs in small cabins, creating chinking that breathes, while still providing remarkable protection from infiltration. The Viking approach also teaches a broader principle. Sealing a roof isn't about creating one perfect barrier. It's about building a system where every layer supports the next. The moss wasn't glamorous, it wasn't structural, but it was essential. And, you know, sometimes the smallest, most unassuming material is what keeps an entire shelter functioning. That is the silent brilliance behind the Viking roof seal trick. It didn't rely on a single heroic layer. It relied on interaction between materials, each responding naturally to the environment. The deeper we go into ancient engineering, the more clear it becomes that our ancestors didn't survive harsh climates through brute force. They survived through observation, adaptation, and an understanding of natural materials that, honestly, we often overlook today. If you want to continue exploring those forgotten techniques and the stories behind them, subscribe to In the Beginning, share this guide with fellow history enthusiasts, and help keep these old-world skills alive for the next generation of explorers.